One of the most important things in calculus that we'll learn about this year is um, the fact that a lot of things are tied into how fast things change. So we'll see a lot of change in uh, throughout this course. So we're going to take a look at a couple of things that you might have some background in already. Um, velocity, for instance, and velocity is the change in position compared to a change in time. Um, and we also know, say, the slope of a line, which is the change in the y value compared to the change in the x value. One of the things that we'll be exploring in calculus is that um, unlike slopes of lines, um, many instances have uh, accelerating and decelerating, uh, changing velocities. And it's really hard to figure out on some of the um, graphs how the how the instantaneous velocity um, are calculated. So we're going to start with just some general ideas right now, and as we work through calculus, we're really going to be taking a look at how can we figure out some of these things uh, using some new algebra skills, using the real fundamental parts of calculus. So one of the things that we need to know about as well is the difference between a tangent line and a secant line. So if I have a curve like this, and I want to find a tangent at a certain point um, versus finding a secant line, which is actually a line through two points. So a tangent line will, and I'm just approximating this, will just touch at one point and does a very good job at estimating what the slope is at that one point. A secant line is a pair of points, and the line that goes through that pair of points, and as you move that pair of points closer together, you can estimate the tangent line of a certain point. So a secant line goes through two points of your graph. A tangent line touches the graph at only one point. Let's take a look at average velocity. Velocity in a little bit more detail, but average velocity. OK, we know from before the average velocity is the change in position compared to the change in time. So let's take a look at an example of how we might use this. Uh, we've got a tower. There's uh, a tower downtown Vancouver that's got a restaurant on the top. It's a revolving tower. It sort of looks like this. Here's some windows. And we've got a ball that we're dropping this way. And um, to know how far the ball has dropped from the tower, we can use a position function. And a position function s is generally used for a position function is equal to uh, 4.9t squared, and t is in seconds. And the position function s of t is in meters. So um, from, say, 0 to 1 second, I can figure out how far this has gone. Uh, s of 0 is equal to 0. Obviously, it hasn't gone anywhere. And s of 1 is equal to 4.9 times 1 squared. So I can use my average velocity formula, and I will get the change in position, so it has gone 4.9 minus 0, where it's ended up from where it started, compared to the time where it's ended up compared to where it started, and I now know that it has traveled an average velocity of 4.9 meters per second. If I take a look at how far it has traveled um, 
from one second to 1.1 second, I would do something similar. So at one second it was at 4.9, but at 1.1 second it was now at 4.9 times 1.1 squared. Grabbing my calculator of 5.929. So the average velocity between these two times is equal to where I ended up compared to where I started over the time frame where I ended up compared to where I started. And if I crunch that on my calculator, I get 10.29. So as you can see, uh, the time frame from when I started to drop this from 0 seconds to 1 second, I was only falling at 4.9 meters per second, but the average velocity is definitely speeding up uh, from 1 to 1.1 seconds and looking at closer to 10.29. So if we um, try and guess what the speed is at 1 second, one way to approach this is to choose smaller and smaller values uh, closer and closer to 1. For instance, you could try, well, what's the interval from 1 to, we did 1.1, so 1.01. .01. And what's the average velocity as I move closer and closer? And it's just a little math and doing the calculations, and you will soon see you are getting closer and closer to the instantaneous value of the velocity at time equals 1. Here's what that looks like graphically. So I've got a time function and a distance function. And at 0, I haven't moved anywhere. And at 1, I've moved 4.9 and I've got a graph. It's parabolic since s of t is equal to some parabola. And what I'm trying to do is figure out what is the instantaneous velocity right at time equals 1. And what I'm doing with calculating those average rates so um, from, say, 1 to 1 1.1 seconds, is I'm actually creating secant lines. So I'm creating a line that is going from 1 to 1 1.1 and finding the slope of that line. And then as I create shorter, closer units, I'm moving my line closer and closer, the yellow line closer and closer to the red line, and trying to approximate what the instantaneous velocity is. Here's a better graphical representation of what I'm getting at with the uh, secant and tangent line. The green line uh, has one point uh, that goes through x is 1 and another point that goes through x is 2 and you can see the green secant line and the red line is the computer's generated tangent line at x is equal to 1. And I can move this green point closer and closer by decreasing the x values. So if I now try a secant at 1.5, you'll see that the secant's now the slope is getting closer to the slope of the tangent line. I can go to 1.2 and the slopes are getting closer. 1.1, my slope is really close. 1.01, .01, and I'm essentially there. And uh, that's the idea that we're going to take into this unit as we try to figure out a way to um, use secant lines to find the tangent slopes by decreasing the distance uh, the differential between the two points until they merge to become one.